Hi, my name is Nazari Edwards, and I'm going to be talking about Chapter 11. Chapter 11 in Interplay is all about communication climate. And so after the book introduces what communication climate is, we get introduced to types of messages that affect and help develop different types of communication climate. Finally, we're introduced to some tips and strategies to develop a more positive communication climate. So now then, what is a communication climate? Communication climate refers to the social tone of a relationship. And so the emotions and attitudes associated with that relationship really helps define and affect how a communication climate proceeds. And so just as a physical climate varies from place to place, communication climates vary between interactions. And so when I was looking for a movie that demonstrated the major principle of communication climate, I, created, I saw a movie that highlighted a psychiatrist patient relationship. And so after doing some research, I stumbled upon the movie Antoine Fisher starring Derek Luke and Denzel Washington. This movie is a biographical drama based on the story of Antoine Fisher, who actually wrote the script of the movie. It focuses on the relationship between Fisher, played by Derek Luke, and a young trouble man in the Navy, and his psychiatrist, Dr. Jerome Davenport, played by Denzel Washington. From the onset of the movie, we see Antoine has some troublesome climate with many, many of those on the crew. His aggressiveness towards individuals on the ship is the reason he's forced to see a psychiatrist, and we soon see a Dr. Davenport. Uh, the only real positive climate from the beginning that we get is, his, is, is that with his soon-to-be girlfriend, Cheryl. They're always smiling together, they're telling jokes, and you can always you can tell that there's some sense of intimacy between the two of them, which only strengthens as time goes on and the movie develops. And so I really want to stress the fact that it's important to kind of hone in on these positive communication climates. If negative communication climates persist, especially when it's for someone who's young, they can really cause detrimental psychological um, effects. So Interplay uses a continuum of messages with three broad regions that are responsible for defining and developing the climate. Confirming messages that show the that the receiver, that they and their opinions, stories, or whatever it is that they're telling, are valued and respected. Disconfirming messages that show a disregard for the receiver and then just a general sense that you don't care, you don't matter, it's not important. And disagreeing messages that lie somewhere in between the two. Um, these disagreeing messages try to show the to the receiver that you're wrong, but I do agree. And so the degree to which these are present in a climate is really going to decide how that climate proceeds. And I think this movie does a, does a really great job at providing some characteristic messages that fit in each category. The initial, the initial meeting between Davenport and Fisher doesn't really go so well. Fisher answers Davenport's questions about his history very, with very snarky answers. For example, when he's asked where he comes from, Fisher responds, under a rock. Regardless of his responses, Dr. Davenport at least recognizes that he's trying to talk. And if Fisher wants to sit in his office in quiet and silence, he will acknowledge that and respect his choices. These types of messages, recognition and acknowledgement, are two basic forms of confirming messages that, that show the receiver that they are valued. So as the movie progresses, we see the relationship between Fisher and Davenport develop. And soon enough, Fisher feels more and more welcome to disclose his past. We find out that his dad died before Fisher was even two months before Fisher was born and his mother was put in jail and gave birth to Fisher while she was still in prison. Um, and his, he was sent to a foster family, the Tates, that were very abusive. And as we learn about his past relationships, we really see what type of communication climates those are defined by. His foster family is full of disconfirming messages and disagreeing messages that really made him feel not valued and went on to impact how he handled his future relationships. For example, his, his foster mom, Miss Tate, is abusive and always exerting her superiority over him. As we see from the flashback, Miss Tate refuses to listen to anything he or his foster brother attempt to say. She's very abusive, very, very snarky, and when he finally did stand up for himself, she kicked him, she kicked him out. This failure to acknowledge the communication attempt is what's known as an, an impervious response, a type of discomfort. 
His cousin Nadine only reinforces that negative climate by exerting her control and intensely leaving the mission. Even when he does try to object to and, and uh, to object to the, to these motions, she tries she usually interrupts him and forces herself onto him anyway. Between the two of them, anytime Anton really tries to complain, he's always went with some counter argument, telling him how he's wrong or he to really demonstrate that he's not valued and we don't care what you have to say. Um, they attack him both physically and psychologically and this really impacts future relationship. And so the book touches on six behavior types suggested by Jack Gibbs that will help you develop a more positive communication climate. While some of these supportive behaviors are depicted in the relationship between Dr. Davenport and Fisher, they're not all present. But as we, learn, as we learn more about his family, we see where these supportive behaviors fail and how they, can how they cause the development of a negative climate. So with Dr. Davenport, his goal, is to help, his goal is to really help Fisher resolve his anger issues and channel that anger into something more positive. And he uses problem-oriented speech to try to unravel Fisher's past rather than po trying to force the, force the communication between Fisher um, and control their relationship. These control messages can really evoke a, defensive res a defensiveness response where, where Fisher tries to save face. In doing so, he probably ends up returning back to that angry state and canceling out all the work that they've done. And so as I touched on before, Dr. Davenport also really sends empathetic messages to uh, Fisher. And while he may not say it explicitly, his nonverbal cues, such as the pat on the back, the smiles, the welcoming tone, all suggest that I value you, I respect you, you are important. And they really help develop a positive relationship. I mentioned, I also mentioned earlier how, how Fisher's foster family was really abusive, they treated him without any regard for him or his feelings, and they really stressed their superiority over him. This is one of those defense-evoking behaviors that kids suggest that really doesn't help define a positive climate. Uh, for example, we see Miss Tate willing to do anything to exert, exert her control and superiority. Is looking is willing to put a put fire in front of a young man's face, a young boy's face, just to try and scare him and punish him for putting his hands in the walls. And so, these behaviors really fall far from that suggested by kids or anything really useful for developing a positive. But while these, all these suggestions by Gibbs are good starting points, they are just that, suggestions. And so the book goes on to describe the invitation of communication as a method of developing an endearing and supportive climate based on value and safety and freedom. And so it's really characterized by civility. And really, we see with Dr. Davenport that he tries to create, create a supportive climate where Fisher's stories or any opinions or really how he felt, any message that he's heard is value. And value is really the key word here in, the, in this chapter. Value is important for developing a positive communication climate. But invitational communication, like I said, is all about civility, positivity, and just really trying to start the connection, start communication between you and someone else. Um, and so one really, uh, I really a scene that I, I thought really depicted the invitation of communication is how, after his first date with Cheryl, Fisher felt compelled to go to Do Dr. Davenport's house and tell him about how it all went. He couldn't even wait till the next session. He was so excited. And now, instead of pushing him away or shooing him away, although Fisher, although Davenport does set some boundaries, he's open and lets him know that I understand what you're saying. And I'm happy for you. And I respect that. Great, it's great. He's channeling his anger, he's going into taking it, moving it into some another direction. Um, and as the movie develops, soon enough we see Davenport encourages Fisher to look out for his, to search out for his real family. Um, and in doing so, he, as, once he finds them, they really exemplify invitational communication. They're very open, they're very kind. They use a positive language of choice that really suggests you're free here and we're really positive. And we value you and want you to know that you're included in us. 
And I think that's a really important message. Um, it really sets the tone for a positive communication climate, which can uh, help out a relationship. And that's all I have for this lecture. Thanks for listening.